everybody. Uh, my name is Tim and I'm from the band Seelophonic and this is the second installment of me sharing my Ableton setup with you guys. Um, in this segment, I'd like to share on how I do patch changing during songs in Ableton and that's using the chain selector. Um, when I moved over from main stage to Ableton, I um, worked really hard on trying to find an efficient and um, I guess a one-touch way to change patches that was nice and easy, um, that was similar to how you can do it in main stage. And uh, I feel like the best way to do that is using the chain selector. So that's what I'm sharing in this clip. So um, the example I'm going to use is with our song Stopping is the Beginning, which you can see on the right hand side there in the red. And um, I use three sounds, well there's three sections um, that I need to change patches between, that's the chorus, and the bridge and the chorus again. And um, for the verses I just use my um, MoFo X4 analog synth as a separate, um, separate sounds for the verses. So yeah, casterize down to the bottom of the screen where I've got my instrument racks. And if you want to know more about how I've set up my racks, please check out another tutorial that I did on organizing song patches in Ableton using racks. And that will explain more about it. So I've got my stopping rack down the bottom here. And um, here it is. And as you can see, the sounds are organized in there, um, labeled chorus and bridge. And uh, when we have a look at the key um, zone editors, um, I've got those sounds mapped um, both for the chorus and the bridge uh, to my left and right hands. Um, so in the chorus, I'm playing two sounds with my left hand, and one sound with my right hand, and then in the bridge, one sound for each hand. So that's the key mapping. But like I said, I need to change patch between the chorus and the bridge, otherwise all these sounds will play at once, which we don't want. So what we do then is um, we go to the um, show chain select editor and um, this 0 to 127 um, is what they call 127 chains and the little blue line up here is the chain selector. So whatever um, chain that is above is what sounds will be playing at that particular moment. So I've put all of the chorus sounds onto um, chain number one and you can move that just by moving it or you can go and stretch it out if you're using lots and lots of chains but I'm only using one. And I've put the bridge sounds onto chain number two. Now if you want, you can hit Command M and you can MIDI map um, that chain selector um, to you know, a button or whatever you want on your MIDI controller. But that's not how I do it. I do it using the power of MIDI clips. So if you have a look up here um, in the All MIDI Racks channel, um, I've made a clip um, for each section so um, sorry I've I've made a scene for each section so over here on the right I've got a chorus scene I've got a bridge scene and then another chorus scene and then I've made a MIDI clip in each of those scenes and I'm using the MIDI clip to change the um, chain selector so if we click down the bottom here and go to the um, clip view um, we're looking here at the envelope section, so I need to make sure that I'm selecting the stopping rack because I'm changing the chain selector in that rack. And then underneath it, I click chain select and I've got the chain selector on number one for this MIDI clip because that's the chorus sounds. Then I go to the MIDI clip underneath that, same thing. Make sure I've selected the stopping rack and the chain selector. And in this one, I've set the MIDI clip to change the chain selector to number two. And then you can do the same for the third one. I've just 
copy and pasted the first chorus MIDI clip down to the bottom chorus MIDI clip. But for some reason that's forgotten it. So let's put it back to number one here. Which for some reason that's not doing. So we'll go copy and paste. Um, so if we go back to the MIDI rack view, when I hit play on the chorus, you'll see that the chain selector is on number one. And then when I hit play on the bridge, it immediately jumps across to chain two and then back to number one for the chorus again. Um, I've set the quantizing um, for these clips, um, so if we go back to clip view, I've set the quantization here to none, and that's so that um, the chain selector moves immediately when I select the next scene. And the beauty of the chain selector is that if you're holding a sound and then uh, you change chain, the sound that you're holding will remain until you play the next note. Um, so it really makes for quite smooth um, patch changing, um, which is very convenient. Um, I'll just share one other thing that I've automated here in envelopes, um, which I mentioned in my um, previous tutorial on organizing song patches, but it's worth mentioning again. And that's this um, device on off automation. Um, so once again, we're in the instrument rack, um, the stopping rack, and then where we we selected chain selector before, but now we're in device on off, and um, that's just this um, envelope here. So if it's up, your device um, is on. So this is all devices in that rack, and um, down is off. So obviously I've got it on here for stopping, um, but uh, the previous song, in the MIDI clip I've set um, the device to off and obviously in the subsequent songs they're also off. So this is just a really good way to save CPU um, on your computer because uh, it means that all your instances of um, Omnisphere aren't running at the same time or whatever VST that you happen to be using. Um, so it keeps your CPU nice and cool. Um, yeah, the value of um, being able to change your um, patches by using clips um, housed in uh, your scenes here um, is that, as you can see off to the to the left here, um, I'm also running our tracks um, from Ableton, and um, so. For instance, I mean, we've just got a, a bunch of one-shot tracks here, but over in, in Audio 1, um, over here I've just got some one-shots, um, and the same here um, for Lions at the Gate. And um, so, yeah, it just means that you can um, put any audio into those um, scenes and it will all be quantized um, and in time, which is what we want. I've also got a cue here. Um, which I send out um, to the guys. One, two, three, four. And as all musicians will know, that's just so that we can come in at the right time. <laughs> Otherwise, it's epic fail. Anyway, um, I hope that's helped you out. Um, and um, yeah, like I said, if you're interested in how I've um, set up my racks, and how I've used Omnisphere Multis. Uh, check out my other tutorial, which is organizing song patches in Ableton using racks. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Yes.